Relays. Why are they so popular? What do they do? And how can you wire one up? What's up guys, my name is Andy. Relays are integral in today's vehicles, but they weren't used as much in older vehicles like my classic 66 Mustang. The headlight switch in my classic car had to have heavy gauge wiring for the amperage and voltage to go through from the power source through the switch and out to the headlights and the switch itself had to be upgraded and beefy to accept that kind of amperage. In today's vehicles, the wiring is smaller. You've got a relay that's being triggered by a small voltage source that can turn on the headlights where the heavy gauge wiring can be minimized and shortened so you don't have to have that running all over the vehicle. So the purpose of a relay is just really a fancy switch. It allows you to use a low voltage signal or low voltage wiring to send high voltage, high amperage to something that might need it. You can also be used to trigger something for if something happens, it can turn something else on or it can turn something else off and you don't have to manually turn things on and off. For example, I'm using a relay to trigger the electric fans in my car. In the thermostat housing, I've got a thermostat switch that when it reaches a certain temperature, it closes the circuit and it's the ground for my relay and that trips the relay and sends voltage to my fans and turns them on. When the temperature cools down, the switch turns off and therefore disengages the ground to my relay and shuts the electric fans off. Another place I've used a relay is for the electronic ignition in my car. These old cars had a point system inside of the distributor and because those would burn up with higher voltage, Ford reduced the voltage with a large resistor wire to cut the voltage down to the point so it wouldn't burn them up. But when I put electronic ignition in, I needed the full 12 volts. So I had to rewire it so that when the car was on, it would get a full 12 volts to the electronic ignition. And I did that by using a relay. So how does a relay work and how do you wire one up? Let's take a look at it. So what I've got here is your standard automotive relay. And the reason why this is standard is because it's got terminal numbers on here that are common and people are familiar with that that use relays. You've also got a diagram here on the top that's not always on these kind of relays. This is just a generic type, but they all more or less look the same and the, the layout of the terminals are usually the same, particularly the numbering. What I've got here is a schematic of one and what you have is a solenoid inside that's when it's powered, it closes a switch. Now this particular one here is what's called a normally open switch because this is closed right here. And there's the terminal, this 87A is in the center. That's not usually used, but you can use it if you wanted to do something. If you're using a circuit to where you needed to use that, you, you could, but otherwise pe most people just ignore that part. So the most common way these are ran is when you've got power coming in, a low voltage signal coming into terminal 86, it goes through the solenoid, and when 85 is set up to a ground, it will close this switch and send power from 30 to 87. And on here, you've got the terminals 86, 85, there's 30, and there's 87. So when power comes in through here and closes the switch, allows power to go from here to here. Here's another, here's a simplified version of that. So we've got terminal 86, terminal 85, terminal 30, and terminal 87. So when power comes in through here, goes to ground, it allows power to go through here. Adding a little more information, again, you've got something like a six to 12 volt signal coming in through here to terminal 86, and then it goes to ground, and you've got a 12 volt source from your battery or a fuse connection. You're gonna want that just so it protects the circuit, and it goes through here and then goes out to the 12 volts, goes out to whatever you need it to power, whether it's, in my case, electric fans or electronic ignition, or you're doing some additional light system on your vehicle. The relay, the fantastic part about these relays is that it allows you to use less of a trigger, less of a voltage source, something that's just not gonna put a lot of amperage on that circuit that you're pulling power from to trigger the relay. And then you can get the, the big power that you need to go through the relay and power the device that you need. This particular relay right here is a 30 amp relay. So I know that pretty much anything I'm gonna run on my car outside of the starter, well, I can use this to power that because 30 amps is gonna be plenty. You can buy bigger, heavier duty relays and you can buy smaller relays that, uh, that don't do as much. These terminals here, you can use what these kind of pigtail systems. What I like about these is they just plugs right in, it cleans it all up and then I can connect my wires to what I need to do here. The wire color is not important. Different manufacturers use different colors, but the layout is gonna be the same. You can also put connectors like this right on the terminals if you didn't have a pigtail. So relays are incredibly easy to wire up. And an advantage, particularly on these older cars where getting wiring to places is not easy, you can send a small wire from wherever you need to have a triggered source to the relay, and then you can have this in the engine bay or close to the battery where you've got the larger, heavier gauge wires, which tend to cost more. You don't have to run them as far to power whatever you need to power. I really like relays. I've used them a lot on my cars, and there seems to be an endless number of things that you can do with a relay. 
Don't let these things intimidate you. They're incredibly easy to wire up. And if you follow that diagram, again, coming power, your signal wire coming in through terminal 86, terminal 85 going to a ground, then power from your battery to terminal 30 with a fuse on it, and then terminal 87 out to whatever you need to power, it's perfect. You can use switches on your dash. You can use something like that thermostat I've got on my car. There's lots of different things you can use to trigger a relay and turn it on for you, or you can manually turn it on, then you can turn on the items that you need with the relay. Good luck, guys. You've got this. We'll see you in the next one.